Hello again, my name is Michael Fudge, and in this end-to-end -end example, I will demonstrate how to read data from a text file with Python code. Specifically, we're going to read data from a file that contains 250 popular beers along with the number of calories per 12 fluid ounces. We'll write a program that allows us to search for the name of the beer, and then it will return back the number of calories in the beer that we found. Like all end-to-end -end examples, I program organically. I'm not going to write this program in a linear fashion. I'm going to write it a bit at a time. I'm going to think it through. I'll probably make a lot of mistakes along the way. This is by design. This example is based on the content of Lesson 8, which covers files, and I'll use Jupyter Notebook to write the program. You're welcome to code along with me, and the completed source code for this example can be found on GitHub here. If you're a student taking my course, then you have this code on your computer already as you've cloned it as part of the repository. All right, let's get started. So first thing I want to do is I want to show you what the data file looks like. So if I go back to the folder that contains my program that I'm going to write here, there's also this text file. And the text file consists of several lines. And in any given line, there is the name of the beer, and then a comma, and then the number of calories in the beer. So the comma is what we call a delimiter. It separates two different pieces of data in the file. As a matter of fact, the fact that there's a different beer on each line, that's also a delimiter. So there's two sets of delimiters. One delimiter, end of line, depicts the, the difference between one beer and the next beer, and then the next beer. And then within the line, there's another delimiter, a comma, which is used to separate the name of the beer from the number of calories. So I'm going to read in this data and use it to find a particular beer that the end user is searching for. And then I will return back the number of calories in that beer. Now that we know how the file is structured, we have to figure out how to read from the file and then ultimately solve the problem. So here's an example of how it might run. I can enter a beer name like Stella and then it will search for Stella and then tell me how many calories are in a 12 ounce glass of Stella. Okay. Let's think this through in terms of our to-do list, because that's usually the way you want to start. So we know that we have to read from the file. But what are we trying to do when we read from the file? We're trying to find the name of the beer that somebody entered, right? So at some point, I have to get that too. So how about something like this? Enter a, enter a beer to search. All right, then I'm going to read from that file. And I'm not going to read from it all at once, because if I read from this all at once, it's not very useful. It doesn't help me find what I'm looking for. I want to read from it a line at a time. So in Python, uh, we use a loop to read from the file a line at a time. There's two ways to read from a file in Python. You can, and this is sort of Python code here. If you have your file handle, you can say fread, and that reads the entire file. This is not very useful unless it's just flat out text, like a paragraph, for instance. And the other way we can read a file is with a loop, like for line in F. And that reads in, this actually is not just, when you say F, it assumes you're using read lines. But you don't have to say read lines. You can leave it out. And it works just the same. And this reads in the file a line at a time. So we want to use this pattern to read in that file a line at a time. Okay. I know I just wrote all that, but it's going to go away. So read in a file, line at a time. Or I could say, maybe a better way to say this is for each line in the file. Now I have to um, separate the line based on the comma delimiter. For example, this would be separated in Amstel, light, and then 99 for the calories. So I have to split the line on a comma into name of beer and calories. Now I have to do, I, I'm guessing I have to check, right? I have to check if the beer that I just split, if that name matches the name you entered, right? So if name entered, matches beer name, 
then what am I going to do? I'm going to print, print beer name and calories. That's, I guess, my strategy. I don't know how good of a strategy it is, but it's a strategy. And most importantly, when you're writing a program is to come up with a strategy first. You can't just start slinging code. It's not going to work out too well for you. You have to come up with a plan. So let's start coding this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need um, my file name, right? So what is the name of this file that I'm going to read in? It's called uh, E to E beer calories text right here. I'm just going to copy it because I am pretty bad at typing things in. Okay, next I need to get my input. So let's do search input enter beer to search for. All right, now we need to open up our file. And we're opening it up. What mode are we opening up for reading? So I put an R in there, R for reading. And then I need to give back a file handle because the conduit by which we communicate with the file is the ver a special variable called a file handle. This is that what this F stands for. Um, I could call this, you know, beer file if I want. I can give it any name I want. As a matter of fact, probably beer file probably makes more sense. And now for beer line, in beer file. I'm trying to be very semantic in the naming of my variables. I could have just called this line, but specifically what, what are each of these lines? Each one of these lines is a beer, right? So I guess beer line makes more sense to me. And uh, just for grins, let's, let's print beer line because I wrote a lot of code and I don't know if any of it works. So that's probably enough code for now. Let's see if this at least reads from the file and prints out my beers. Beer to search for doesn't really matter because I'm not really doing anything with search. So I'm just going to slap down some keys here. And you can see it does read from my file. Awesome. Now let's talk a little bit about what could happen if it doesn't read from the file correctly and what the repercussions of that might be. For example, if the file doesn't exist, like this file doesn't exist, beer calories 99, that's not there. So what happens when we run this? we get a file not found error. So we get a runtime error. The way we handle runtime error, run errors is with try accept, right? So we might wanna think at this point about wrapping that up in a try accept. We might, let's save it for the end if we have time, we'll do it then. And instead, let's keep coding on. So this beer line that I get is not split up into name and calories, right? Because I need to split that up into name and calories so that I can print out a message like this. So there's a string method that I can use. And if you're unfamiliar with the string methods, one strategy I can give you for that is you can go here and use the Python help system to figure this out. And if I look through here, I'm doing my homework. And one of the things I want to use here is called split. Split returns a list of words as using separator as the delimiter. So the separator says none, which means it defaults to using just a space as the delimiter, but I can set this delimiter to be whatever I want. And so this is what I'm going to be, this is going to, what I'm going to use to split this on the comma. See, there's that comma there. I want to split it on that comma. All right, let's give it a shot here. Let's do this. Let's say, so it's going to split into two pieces. So one neat trick you can do in Python is you can assign these to two variables like this. I, I know the first one is going to be the beer name. And the second one is going to be the beer calories. So then I can say that beer line split on the comma. Let's check to see if that works. Let's print beer name beer calories see what that does so it does work see it prints the beer name and then it prints the beer calories and where did the comma go well the comma's not there anymore because i split the line on the comma into two separate values the first value is the name and the second value is the calories all right that's cool so one thing i probably should fix though is because when you read from a file it's all text right but I want this calories to be an integer, so I need to convert it to an integer using um, my type conversion. So I should probably do something like this on this line, beer calories is beer is int, convert it to an int. There. 
I wish I could do it all on this one line, but I can't. This splits them into two strings. And uh, just in case you're curious as to what I'm doing and why, if I go up here and say, what is the type of beer calories? You'll see it still says stir. See, it still, still says stir. So I want it to be an integer because this is a number, right? Okay. So I just did a little quick conversion of that. Okay, well, we're getting there. So that does the conversions. And now I need to check to see if the, if the beer I'm searching for is the beer I found. So I can do that simply with if search, right? If search, I'm right here. If search equals beer name. And then we can have a nice print statement like print percent s has percent d calories per 12 ounce serving beer name beer calories all right let's give it a try beer to search for coors oh didn't find any coors I guess I got to be very specific because this says search for exactly that. Uh, let me try it again. Coors Light. Coors Light has 102 calories per 12 ounce serving. Okay, so that works. This might be too specific of a search. I mean, that's not very helpful to have to search that exact for the value that we want. So maybe a better way is to look for part of the name like maybe um it's just in there somewhere right so this is where you need to use your string methods again so if i come down here and type um help stir again let's see what we can do here go down and look through this and code count oop, ends with find oh find sounds good return the lowest index of s where substring is found okay so that's good if minus one means it won't it won't find it so if i'm looking for coors and it's zero or more, then it found Coors in there. So Coors Extra Golden, Coors Light, whatever they might be, it, it finds it. And then that ends up being probably a little more useful than an exact search. So I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna say, let me just, I, I, I guess I should go down here and try it. So if I type in search, right? It says Coors Light, right? But let's suppose search is just Coors. What I can look for is if I say beer name, find, search, and if that is not, not equal to minus one, then that means I found it somewhere. It's either Coors Dark or Coors Light or whatever the beer might be. And then it'll find all the Coors beers. So this is actually a little more useful because it gives you kind of a family of beers. You can type in Abita and it'll give you the calories of all the different Abita beers. This is much better than specifically searching for a beer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna take this here. I'm gonna put that right here. We'll see how this goes, see how that works. Let's give it a try here. Coors. There we go. See, now I get one, two, three Coors beers because it's just searching for Coors, searching for Coors in the entire beer name. And it's saying, are you finding Coors anywhere in that beer name? If you do, the index would be zero, one, two, three, or more, right? And so therefore, please return back uh, true from this expression and then print it. So there is a situation where I go through this entire for loop and I never find the beer, right? So let's run this again. I search for the beer uh, Mike and there's no beer named Mike and I'd love to print, hey, there's no beer named Mike. So how do we handle the situation where I type in a beer and it's not there? We, we go through this entire for loop and we never find our beer, right? And what do we do, right? So we have to keep track of a, this, a situation where we never find the beer, right? So the way we do that is with a variable. So up here, I'm gonna use a variable, I'm gonna say found. I'm gonna say found is false. She means I haven't found my beer, right? And then what I'll do is down here in this if statement, I'll say found is true because I found a beer. And then at the end, after my four right here, when this four is all over, I just say if found, if not found, you didn't find a beer right if it's still false print I could not find any beers matching percent s search 
And that should take care of it because now if you type in Coors, it'll find Coors and then it makes found true and then not found is, is false. And so it never prints this out. Let's see if it works here. Mike, I could not find any beers matching Mike. If I run it again and type in Coors, it gives me the Coors beers. Well, there you have it. That's pretty much the entire solution. One thing you might want to do um, is handle when the file's not available. Like if I change this file name back to calories99 and execute it and type in a beer, uh, I get file not found error. And therefore, I don't want to run the entire program because I can't do any of this because it can't find the file, right? So what I'll, I, I want to do is try accept this. And the error ends up getting thrown right here with the width open. So that's where I need to start my try accept. So I can do it like this. I can say try this and then accept when you have a file not found error print I could not open the file percent s there we go so I'll run this we were to search for, and we'll put in Coors. I could not open the file, Beer Carol East X. So it's a little more graceful than crashing on you. If I go back here, let's try it one more time. Coors. Ooh, I could not find any beers matching Coors. How come I couldn't find my beers matching Coors? It should have found that. Ah, uh, oh, I just figured it out. So let me run it again. Coors with a capital C. It finds it. So let's fix that. I mean, because this is kind of a problem. You're not going to always put in the right case to match these, right? So one way we can handle that is when whatever you type into search, right, we should make it lowercase and we should convert the beer name to lowercase before we find it so that we're always trying to match it on lowercase. All right. So let's do that. Let's say search. One way to convert something to lowercase, watch, if I type in a search is Mike like this, and then search lower, it converts it to lowercase like that. So this way we're always matching things on the same case. All right, let's do that. So I wanna say search lower, I want that. And I probably should do that right at the input level, like that maybe. And then beer name, convert it to lowercase, then find what you search. I'm doing a little what's called method chaining here. I have this variable, then this function, and then this is still a string. This whole thing is still a string, so then I use another string function on that. Pretty handy. Coors. Still finds them. Same thing, it should work with Budweiser, right? If I do that, and just a Bud finds all the Bud and Budweiser. So he finds Budweiser and Bud. And there's the whole thing. Um, hopefully you learned a lot and we'll see you again next time. Thank you, bye now.